Hi guys, welcome back to Junri's Vlog Dagri Action. For this video reaction, guys, let's go to Germany. The title of this video, actually, this is a request video reaction. Request by Kiss Forbidden. So, uh, the title of this video that we need to do some reaction for today, guys, Battle of Berlin. This is a uh, fit with the potential history. This is an animated uh, history, guys, that we really want to know. And I really love and watching with this one because my there is. There is in my mind, guys, that I really want to know the history, not just here in the Philippines, but the history outside country, what really happens, those, like, the war that de existed on that is a specific country also, I really want to know, because in one way or another, it's something that it will be an additional knowledge to you also, and I hope, guys, and to you also, that you will know something about it, you you will question yourself, oh, this happened that in their country. I hope guys, you enjoyed watching with this one. Dito the honor also with the video to the armchair historian. I'll put in the description box below so that you can connect also with the owner of the video, armchair historian. Thank you so much once again to Cheese Forbidden for suggesting with this video. And if you're new to my channel, just click the subscribe button. Click on notification bell so that you'll be updated on our future uploads. And if you have some comments, suggestions related to this video, guys, drop it in the comment section. I would love to read and respond to you all and make your video request and let's get to it guys enjoy and learn something from the past history of berlin germany the battle of berlin To give a massive thanks to World of Warships Blitz, this video would not be possible without their backing. World of Warships Blitz is a free-to-play naval action game that puts you at the helm of your very own warship. Oh. Available for free for your iOS and Android devices, you can play more than 140 highly detailed and authentic ships of all types and sizes, oh, including cool. quick and stealthy destroyers, versatile cruisers, imposing fleet carriers, and our personal I love favorite, voice. massive battleships. Try your skills as a naval tactician in epic 7 vs 7 real-time battles against other players all in the palm of your hands the oh. game looks fantastic and is super easy to get into join us and 12 million other players today by downloading wow. the game and using our link in the description below you'll help support this channel and also get the powerful battleship uss yes, south those carolina people who as love a free games. bonus after completing the tutorial yeah. hi i'm griffin johnson the armchair historian today's video oh. the battle of berlin He's very handsome and the, I love his like voice the way how he narrated with this one. It's incredible. Salute to you. Salute to you. I really want to know go like go back to the history what really happens during those war especially in berlin it is april 30th 1945 the third reich has fallen and the red army has occupied most of berlin red army. adolf hitler's plans of enzig or ultimate victory completely unravel as mm. the din of artillery fire and tank shells begins to rupture the fuhrer bunker to him the german people were at fault if only they had oh. fought harder feiglinge cowards he exclaims Feiglinger. on the other side of the room is Lieutenant General Hans Bauer, an accomplished pilot and trusted member of Hitler's staff. Mm -hmm. In resignation, he tells him, Bauer, ich möchte mich von Ihnen verabschieden. Die Zeit ist gekommen. Meine Generäle haben mich verraten. Meine Soldaten wollen nicht. Imagine those times. Ich kann nicht People, like, been bit betrayed, you will betray, or you will get betrayed. Fury reduced to a soft murmur. The pilot tries to convince the Fuhrer to escape, volunteering to transport him to Japan, Argentina, or the Middle East, where he could live out the rest of his days in obscurity. Oh. However, Hitler has made his decision. The Krieg wird mit dem Fall Berlins enden, und ich stehe oder falle mit Berlin. Wow, this strong. They really, really want to fight. The battle for the city was among the final major offensives of the Second World War, and it marked the climactic end of the Nazi Empire, which oh. had contracted just as fast as it expanded. 
In 1945, Berlin had a population of about 3 million, down from 4.3 million before the outbreak war just six oh, years that. ago. As early as the Christmas of 1944, morale among Berliners had reached a critical low point, with only the most staunch and fanatic of the Nazi regime clinging to any hope. British and American air raids only continued to intensify, prompting many residents to spend more time in shelters than not. But it was not the British nor the Americans that they truly feared. Part 1. The Downfall December 6, February 1945. It was that lingering threat from the East, the successor state to the nation that had nearly humbled Frederick the Great, the state whose people had suffered so much, the USSR. The symbols etched into the walls of the air raid shelters were said to mean Lernt schnell Russisch, learn Russian quickly. Every Berliner knew the Soviets were coming. Thanks to the Reich yeah, Minister of Soviet Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, and his efforts, morale in Berlin did improve after the initial stages of the Ardennes counteroffensive, also known as the Battle of the Bulge, which delayed the Allied advance by five to six weeks. Oh. However, the more perceptive members of because the German strong. High Command were still fretful, knowing that the Reich was not in a state to protect its eastern border properly. Most notably, General Heinz Guderian, Chief of the General Staff, and General Reinhard Galen, Head of the Military Intelligence Department for the Eastern Front, were yeah. fully aware of the impending Red Army advance, which severely outnumbered and outgunned its German counterpart. Intelligence even knew about the general time frame of the invasion, three weeks, and where it would happen, the line along the river Vistula. And thus, it was argued that since the Ardennes Offensive wasn't bearing fruit, despite what propaganda said, much of their strength should be diverted to the east. However, Hitler remained unconvinced, believing that the odds could not be so stacked against the superior Germans. And he was validated by his right-hand man, Heinrich Himmler, who claimed the notion of a Soviet offensive little more than a bluff. With his delusions reinforced by his advisors, Hitler diverted troops from the Vistula, specifically panzer troops, not to set up a defensive line against the Soviets, but to launch an ill-advised counterattack on Hungary's oil fields, oh. predicting that German forces would be Quite able to break it. through to Budapest, despite the fact that the city had been surrounded by the Red Army since Christmas. This relief attempt promptly failed, and the Soviets took the city on February 13th. Then, the Germans launched Operation Nordwind in the west, which prolonged the Allied advance, but defanged the already battered Luftwaffe. The Germans lacked any capability to launch a thrust into Allied or Soviet territory. Its enemy in the east had 6.7 million line. men spread on a front ranging from the Baltic to the Adriatic coast, well over twice the size of the German army during their invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, which up until oh. then had been the largest invading force in history. Of those, 2.5 million men, 41,600 guns and mortars, and 6,250 tanks and assault guns constituted the invading force against Berlin, which faced approximately 1 million Germans with 10,400 guns and mortars and 1,500 tanks and assault guns. In the air, Germany didn't fare any better. The Soviet military deployed 7,500 aircraft against 3,300 German aircraft. But these numbers didn't he face Hitler or his top time. advisors. Hermann Göring, the supreme commander of the Luftwaffe, in a stunning display of cognitive dissidence, dismissed Soviet air superiority, claiming they were not real planes. Oh. The Germans did get oh. some things right, though. Joining me today is my friend Potential History to talk about just that and give you a general overview of the state of the Red Army oh, at this point. This good. The Germans understood that Soviet troops in some cases exhibited a lack of discipline and this was especially evident among young officers eager to prove themselves to their troops. Despite that though, the reigning belief that the Soviets were effective mainly due to their overwhelming numerical advantage, while looking like the obvious conclusion on the surface, doesn't tell the full story. The Soviets outmaneuvered and outplanned the Germans as early on as 1942, and capitalized on their successes by taking huge swathes of land in their offensives in 1943, 44, and 45. On top of oh. all of these factors, with the end of the war feeling so close at hand, the Red Army's morale was at an all-time high. 
Knowing the Soviets were coming for retribution, Yosef Goebbels readied a force of 60,000 untrained individuals. Oh, for me, it doesn't lame, matter how and women. Many, many you of have soldiers, troops. though I hesitate to even it call matter soldiers, how have you up to set just up five rounds or how smart you are during this time. war. Fighting alongside these troops were members of the Hitler Youth, some of which were as young as 15, as well as the fanatic Seriously. remnants of the veteran SS. At this point, the Fuhrer that remained is. determined, proclaiming with his usual gusto, the enemy will be greeted by massive artillery fire. Gaps in our infantry will have been made good by countless new units. The mm -hmm. Bolshevik must and shall bleed to death before the capital of the German Reich. Part of Soviet offensive, January 12, April 15, 1945. The eve of the offensive had come, and the Red Army sappers began clearing minefields, laying the preparation for tanks to cross the bridgehead on the Vistula. And to further worsen Germany's situation, really Hitler how... ordered the Panzer Reserves located in the region to move forward, putting them right in the range of Soviet artillery. Oh. The Soviet assault began at 5 a.m. Moscow time on January 12th under a snowy sky. It was a sweeping offensive, with the Russians easily dispatching the Panzer Division sent against them and heading straight into Silesia as well as East Prussia. Over the next few days, the Red Army conquered everything in its path. Oh, it was not long before Red Army the Vistula line collapsed completely. But instead of resting on their laurels, the Soviets continued to move at breakneck speed. Over the course of a two-week period, very the Red strong. Army so captured fast. essentially all of Poland and were only 69 kilometers, or 43 miles, from Berlin. Despite oh. this auspicious and speedy start, Soviet General Georgi Zhukov, renowned commander of the 1st Belorussian Front, decided to wait until April to march on Berlin itself. As a counterattack from the Germans in Pomerania very had to smart. be repelled, Hitler very may have survived move. the Ides of March, but the Ides of April would spell his doom. The three Soviet fronts from the offensives that had taken place up to they that point, this. the first Belarusian front, the second Belarusian front, and the first Ukrainian front, had an estimated 2.5 million men. The Soviets were preparing to completely encircle Berlin, not for a strategic purpose, per se, but in order to keep the Western Allies out. Mm. On April 16th, the Battle of Zelo Heights began, as part of the larger Battle of Order Niza. Nearly 1 million Soviet soldiers and over 20,000 tanks and guns were sent to the gates of Berlin against 100,000 Germans and 1,200 guns and tanks. The battle only lasted four days before Zhukov's men breached through, taking 30,000 losses compared to only 12,000 German losses. Zhukov oh. was eager to be the first one in Berlin in order to beat out the commanders of the other two fronts at any cost necessary. Stalin wanted the three commanders to race to the German capital, and Stalin, as we all know, was not a man you wanted to displease. The next day, April 20th, was Hitler's birthday, and the Soviets' gift to him was a complete encirclement of his capital along with heavy shelling. Two days later, the shelling continued uninterrupted, and Hitler ordered his 9th and 12th armies to link up, who had been occupied on the Western Front, and engage the Soviets. This culminated in a number of different engagements, one of which, the Battle of Bautzen, was actually a German victory, but it was too little, too late. The Red Army would not be dislodged. Part 3. Wow. Red Army in Berlin. So they just entered in Berlin now. By April 25th, the Soviets were in Berlin itself, but Imagine the Germans weren't done strong. yet. Just as in Stalingrad, urban warfare commenced. The Germans fought street to street, mounting machine guns, snipers, and anti-tank weaponry on apartment rooftops where Soviet tanks couldn't reach them. In response, Soviet tanks stuck to the shoulder of the roads, and machine guns were mounted to their sides. Anti-aircraft guns were used to target Germans on rooftops, and flamethrowers and grenades were used to flush out the city's most defiant defenders. Unlike in Stalingrad, there were fewer instances of house-to-house -house fighting and a greater number of buildings being leveled by self-propelled artillery. Oh. Having encircled Berlin before entering it from all sides, fighting raged on all over the city, coursing through the suburbs as well. The Germans were pushed back heavily near the Reichstag, that proud historic seat of parliament that the Nazis had gutted in their ascent to power. 
While the first and second Belarusian armies remained in the city, Konev, commander of the first Ukrainian front, ordered a portion of his force to disengage in order to stop the German 9th Army from rendezvousing with the German 12th Army and relieving Berlin thereafter. Oh. On April 30th, the Soviets were advancing toward the Reichstag itself. A network of trenches, tunnels, moats, and guns surrounded the area, Crazy. and many Red Army troops were gunned down as they tried to close in. But gradually, the perimeter became tighter and tighter, and the defenders' numbers began to dwindle. When the Soviets finally breached the Reichstag, fierce room-to-room -room fighting commenced. On the following day, May 2nd, the Red Army finally neutralized the Reichstag and iconically raised the Soviet Red flag Army were very it. strong. Meidling surrendered thereafter, and the war in Europe was at an end. On the same day, as Berlin caved in around him, Hitler committed suicide. Some 10,000 Germans remained of the 300,000 that had been drummed up. General Helmut Weidling, who took over as the last commander of the Berlin Defense Area, realized the hopelessness of the situation and made it clear that he favored surrender. Only Josef Goebbels opposed him, but his Hitler resistance was short-lived, as the next day <laughs> Goebbels took his own life alongside his family. Oh... Imagine. Sometimes it's sad, but... If you are like a strong leader and then you you know already that you will be like lost and you will like not winning the war of course you have to take your own life rather than these people will caught you and punish you like to death oh goodness I really enjoyed watching with this one the Red Army the Soviet Union were very strong and they know how to play or to give a war strategically because they are smart in doing like doing some war even that their troops are very less but the way how smart they were in arranging or fighting with during this war see how they move so fast and get into berlin goodness gracious i really enjoyed watching with this one it really gives me an idea of like it just sometimes it really doesn't matter how many or how many you have your troops or your armies or your uh, artillery or your weaponry it just matter how smart and then how you organize or how the leadership uh, being applied to your to your team or to your army or to your soldier or to your country and that's really important guys i hope you enjoyed watching with this one and you learned something about it and i really want to hear from you at the comment section and if you want to see the full video it's on the description box below and if you like this video guys same as i did just give a massive thumbs up like and share subscribe also with my channel and this is junris blagadag reacting stay humble stay positive guys and if you want to connect my second channel it's on the description box below and if you want to connect also with my social media accounts it's in here guys and thank you so much and have a good day everyone and see you on my next video reaction bye bye guys